First up, Counseling Hub. So there's two parts of the Counseling Hub. There's the Counseling Caseload and there's the Counseling Log. So I'm going to break it down um, by each one and then we can talk about the Hub together. So here is an example of a Counseling Caseload. So I use Google Sheets. I love use, using Google Sheets. You could also use an Excel sheet. Um, I believe my first one that I created, I did an Excel sheet, but then I realized that I love the fact that Google Sheets, you can't really lose them. You know, they're like in the cloud and you can, you know, share them, access them across different devices. So it makes it way better, um, especially if something happens to your computer or, you know, if you have a school computer and a personal computer and you're trying to access back and forth. But a counseling caseload is basically students who are on your weekly schedule. So I want you to think about your small groups and your individual students. So if you look at the spreadsheet here, it's going to do a few things. It's going to share some information about these kids, some identifying information, and then it's going to share kind of a checklist um, order of events per se. So for example, I have uh, Britney Spears, free Britney is the first one, and then her name, teacher name, grade level, area of need. So area of need is going to be the topic that you're seeing them for in counseling. Um, and then the counseling type. So this is where you're going to specify if they are individual or group. Now you may notice I have some colors here and that's because I like to color code my groups. Um, so as students are being, you know, referred to or added to your caseload, you're going to write their name here. So that's why some of the colors are separated. So for example, this growing uh, minds, growth mindset group, let's say I got these three referrals and I decided to make a group. Well, then a couple weeks later, someone, you know, gets referred or a new student comes and they're going to be a good fit. That's why their name is down here. It's not right in order, but you don't need to readjust your whole spreadsheet, just color coordinate them. So at a glance, you can see, oh, look, I have four students in that um, growth mindset group, or I have three students in that um, blooming friendships group. And then the next one is if they've received a referral. So who you receive the referral from. So you're seeing them for a reason. Is that because their parent recommended them, the principal, maybe they self-referred, maybe their teacher recommended them. I like to make a note of that. Um, also, I forgot to mention with the counseling type, if sometimes you'll see students, so for example, I have Ariana Grande here at the bottom. Um, sometimes you'll see students individually and in a group. I've definitely done that before. So I do have her name on here twice so I can keep her with the group, but then also individually as well. Because as you can see, I'm seeing her for two different topics. Um, but I did indicate this with a star and asterisk beside her name. That way, if I'm going back later and I'm trying to count, you know, collect some data and count the number of services I've provided or the number of students served, um, I won't double count her, if that makes sense. And then I have here, um, if I've contacted the parent, so I always like to let the parent know, hey, services are about to start, here's the permission slip. So that goes on to the next one, send a permission slip. And then the next one is received a permission slip. Um, off screen here, it got cut off, but there's a couple more columns I include. One is to chat with the teacher about the ideal time. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you're finding a time to schedule them. And then finally, if you've actually scheduled the session. So that's kind of your checklist that you're going through. So I love keeping this on my computer. So at any point, I know I have a, a status update on the student. So if the principal's like, hey, are you seeing so-and-so? I'm like, oh yeah, um, we've already contacted the parent. We're just waiting to get that permission slip back. Or I've got the permission slip back. We're waiting to hear back from the teacher to schedule sessions. This way students don't fall through the cracks because so often you'll get stuck in one of these points. You may have received the permission slip and reached out to the teacher, but then you get busy with something else, the teacher didn't get back to you, and you're thinking, oh no, I'm waiting to hear back from this teacher, um, I never scheduled them, and they just looked through the cracks, the group's already started, and that kiddo didn't get in it in time. So that's the purpose of this caseload is to say, stay super organized, because I used to have a manila folder, you know, right by my desk, I would throw all the permission slips in there, um, but they weren't even alphabetized or they weren't even in the order I received them. And so it gets very tricky. So you could even get fancier than this. I mean, you could insert images um, under the permission slip or like a link to a file of a Google Drive so you could scan these or if you have a digital permission slip, that way you can access it right there. You could keep it all digital, all streamlined. Um, and instead of these yeses, if you see in the top right here, I've done a checkbox, so you can always do, you know, insert checkbox instead of typing yes or no, you could do checkboxes, so a few different options for you there. 
Now, the second part of the counseling hub is the counseling log. So the counseling log is where you're going to do a daily summary of services provided or of the students that you've seen that day. So I like to break it down by month at the bottom and then by week on the actual screen. So you can see there the pink lines indicate um, in between weeks. So I have the dates, um, the student, and then the area of need. So again, that's the same area of need, counseling type, all that's the same. You could put teacher here as well. Um, I don't really find it necessary because remember you have that info on your caseload spreadsheet. This is just tracking who they are, why you're seeing them, how you saw them, the counseling type, and then for how long you saw them. So even if they're on your schedule for 30 minutes, for example, individual kiddos, I usually schedule for 30 minute chunks. But sometimes I only see them for 20 minutes because maybe 10 minutes, you know, we. I walked to pick them up from their classroom and then uh, they had to go to the bathroom on the way. Or maybe, you know, I had one kid before them, the group ran over or something because we were doing a cut and paste activity and we had to clean up our supplies. You know, just because you have them on your calendar for 30 minutes doesn't mean you're actually seeing them for 30 minutes. And you may be thinking, well, why does the actual minute matter? And I believe it matters because you can then use this to collect data of services provided to show in like an end of the year report or to show to your admin, you know, like I, you know, spent this many minutes with individual counseling students. Um, now, here's the part where it's different, you know, than the caseload, because you might be thinking this looks kind of similar. But this is where we're tracking what we did with that student. So strategies used. This is the name of the activity that you did. So maybe you read a book with them or maybe you did a craft with them or played some boom cards with them or a board game. Write that down. Then in the notes section, this is optional, but maybe you want to write, you know, a little note or comment about the student's affect or if they had you know, um, something significant happened. Now you do want to keep in mind confidentiality. I like to keep this kind of brief. We're not writing a novel about everything the kids shared with you in the session, but it may be something like they seemed really upset when they arrived to group, or maybe they, um, you know, are staying at dad's this weekend or just something contextual. And then I have a parent communication column, and that's where you're going to dock any communication that occurred during that week. So if you had a parent phone call or a parent meeting, so let's take a look at the first one here. So I have the date as June 2nd, because that's when I saw the student, and then I write what we worked on. But if you see on June 3rd, um, Blake's mom returned a psych um, evaluation. So maybe he went and had a psych evaluation done, and she shared the results with us. So, of course, these are all fictional examples. Um, I have that. Now, her date's the 3rd, but I didn't make a new column because she still goes with that student, with Blake, but it's during that same week. Now, if this had occurred the next week, I wouldn't write it here. I would write it with the next week. So that's kind of how you would organize the parent communication. And of course, this is up to you. This is just a system that's worked well for me, but you can completely modify this to fit your own needs. Um, so the case, the counseling log, the reason we want to do this is so we can track our services provided. So we can use it for data. We can also use it for attendance to know how many times you met with a student. Oh, they didn't come this week. Um, and we can also use it to keep track of what we did with them. Because if you're like me, you're probably seeing a lot of kiddos and it gets confusing. You, you know, don't remember what you did with them. You might need to write it down. So you can say, oh, we worked on, and you can even get specific, like first three pages of self-regulation journal. So then you know when they come in, oh, we're going to work, we're going to start with page four. Um, so that's a way that you can kind of keep track of what you did with them. Um, but this is just a nice way to stay organized. So that's the spreadsheet. Uh, caseload spreadsheet and the counseling log spreadsheet, but now the counseling hub. So this is exciting. You're going to combine the two to form a counseling hub. And how you would do that is if you look on the bottom here where I've circled in yellow, you'll have tabs at the bottom that you can toggle between to show, oh, here's my caseload, here's my log, because you'll likely be flipping back and forth between these. You can just leave this up on your computer all day. And then, you know, as a kiddo leaves, you type in their info, um, on the log, as you get a permission slip turned in, you do a little check mark. This is how you can just stay organized and on top of it throughout the day. Something you do want to keep in mind, though, if you see the September 2021 at the top there, on the counseling log, on the bottom tabs, I had the months. So because they're sharing this now, you would need one of these per month. Or unless you're someone who's just cool with having like a really long like the whole school year in one thing and you just keep scrolling. So that's an option too.